On today's video, I am cooking 100 years of chicken. We're also gonna be rating them from one to 10, so you know which ones are good and which ones are terrible. And we're starting off with this one. Google, that rotisserie chicken looks so weird. <laughs> yeah, what happened to the bones? They turned into rice, bro. <laughs> Welcome to the 1910s. Chickens are one of the most common and widespread domestic animals in the planet. The first report of eating chicken dates back more than 2,000 years ago. But you bet that cavemen were for sure eating this delicious bird. In the 1910s, this bird became quite fancy. This is Balotin chicken, and it was quite popular during this time. To make it, the first thing you gotta do is to get a nice bird. Then the key here is to start on the back and remove all of the bones from the chicken. Once you're done, this is what it should look like. Next up, to get it seasoned. For that, I just added a good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper. However, the stuffing was quite fancy. To make it, the first thing you want to do is to saute some mushrooms. Once the golden brown color was reached, throw in some green onions followed by garlic. Mix everything well and cook it a little bit more. As the next thing that goes in is some rice. But for coloring and flavor, we went ahead and added some smoked turmeric. Mix everything well and combine the ingredients together because now to cook the rice, throw in some chicken stock followed by salt and black pepper. Stir everything around and bring it to a simmer. Cover it up and once the rice is fully cooked, here we have the stuffing. The key here is to add it to the chicken and as the fat melts, it will flavor this rice even more. As now, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and tie it up. As once it's done, check it out. We have our beautiful balotin chicken ready to be roasted. And on the 1910s, they used either a smoker or a wood fire oven. You gotta pick whichever one you think is gonna be best because regardless of which one, when you're done, it should be nice golden brown just like this. And when you cut it up, and take a look. Now this is a fancy chicken. To finish it off, often it was served with gravy. Just a simple one though, because as you can clearly see, this is a fancy meal. But is it really good? Is it worth the amount of work? Well, let's find out right now. So what do you guys think, gentlemen? It looks fancy. Yes. Never seen anything like that. That looks so unique. Enough talking. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Mmm. That gravy is amazing, everybody. This is very difficult to make. It's time consuming, but it is amazing. What do you think, description guy? On the very first chicken of this video, I'm blown away. I've never come across this dish before, but to have so much juice from the gravy, so much flavor from the seasoning, the rice, the vegetables inside, I taste mushroom. This thing is amazing, though. It the is. flavor is really good. It's got a little bit of smokiness to it. Yes, it that does. Nice. The rice, because of all the chicken fat render inside of the rice. This one was a very nice, delicious, fancy chicken, but the next one is far away from being fancy. In the 1920s, New York style pizza started becoming extremely popular and Lombardi's in New York City was selling their pies for only five cents. Now that is a good deal. Another great dish brought by Italian immigrants was chicken alla milanesa. This incredible way of enjoying chicken is simple, easy, and delicious. Let me show you. Here we have some chicken breasts. The first thing to do is to flatten it out. I like to use a big hammer. As long as you get this thing nice and flat, that's the goal. Once that's done, you wanna go ahead and beat up some eggs. As all you have to do now is to coat that chicken really good with the egg wash, followed by a good amount of breadcrumbs. Now heat up the oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and throw it in there. Once you achieve a nice golden brown color, go ahead and flip to the other side. As once both sides are nicely golden just like this, set it down on a cooling rack so that it can stay crispy and immediately throw in some salt. As once it's done, you want to throw in some parsley for coloring and flavor. And of course, it is not finished if you don't put some lemon wedges right on top. The question is, is this as good as it looks? Well, let's find out right now. And here we have the 1920s. What do you guys think? Dude, that looks so good. You know why? Because it's fried. I know you guys are ready. I'm used to steaks having a golden brown yeah. crust, not a, not a chicken like this. Let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. Oh, how can you go wrong? That's oh, amazing, I... everybody. Come on, man. It's simple, but it's executed so perfectly. It's a very flavorful chicken breast. It's juicy. That crust is so crispy. It's not greasy and saturated at all. It's nice. It's light. It's great. This was easy to make, and every country has a different variation of this one here. Unlike the next decade, where everything turned upside down, it's a complete 180. Oh, God. Oh, bro. Times were tough in the 1930s. Foods like beans, potatoes, cornmeal, and bread was what most people ate. Meats like steak and chicken was extremely expensive. And in order to stretch out a meal, chicken and dumpling was created. 
A simple meal that is delicious and filling? Let me show you how simple it is to make. Everything starts off with whatever pieces of chicken you have available. First thing to do is to boil the chicken. This method was extremely popular during that time. Once that's done, you want to go ahead and shred it. Now remember, we gotta stretch out this meal as much as possible, meaning we're not gonna be using the whole breast. So we'll only be using half of it. So the next step is to go ahead and do something that is called a mirepoix. We're talking about onions, carrots, and celery. Throw that up on a skillet with some olive oil and stir it up. Then add some garlic and mix everything well. As now, you can do two things. Use the water that you just cooked the chicken. Or if you were lucky, buy some chicken stock. As now, you wanna let it simmer for a little bit. And as that's happening, you wanna go ahead and make your dumplings. For that, into a bowl throw in some all-purpose flour followed by salt baking powder parsley black pepper chives butter an egg and finish it off with milk now mix everything together until it becomes a dough but once everything is fully combined you should have something like this now you just want to split it in small pieces and your dumplings are ready to go into the broth but first add in some chicken then immediately go in with the dumplings season it with salt for taste and you want to let it simmer so that it can cook the dumpling all the way through because once it's done your chicken and dumpling is ready. Now I'll tell you one thing. If you grow up eating this, you know how good it really is. But I understand if you never had it, you don't know what it tastes like. So for that reason, let me show you what's like for two people that never had this thing. Because at least to me, this is delicious. And here we have the 1930s. What do you guys think? What, what's going on here, man? Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> what is this? I we thought got... this was a chicken video. Chicken and dumpling, my friend. Damn, you guys don't look excited, man. This is nostalgic for me. Nostalgic? You were there? No, in the <laughs> sense, in the sense of like, it brings back memories when I'm young. That's what I mean. How old are you, bro? <laughs> bro I'm pretty old, bro. Enough talking, let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a mm -hmm. Hmm. I like the broth. The broth is super flavorful, super rich, and, and very tasty, but the actual chicken dumpling itself is kind of throwing me off. The texture is very weird. You, it's like a chicken meatball almost. It's not like any dumpling I've ever had. There's not only the Asian dumpling. You're thinking about this kind of dumpling? No, my friend, this is a little bit different. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad. I can definitely see why it was so We popular. gotta be honest. How about you? I think it's good. I think it's like chicken noodle soup, except the noodles are ball. shaped like a ball. Yes, it is a simple dish with very humble beginnings, unlike the next decade. I thought you were going to say unlike Leo. Damn, Damn. guys. Damn. <laughs> In the 1940s, World War II was at full force. That's when this dish was created, chicken cordon bleu. The French term cordon bleu is translated as blue ribbon. The cordon bleu was originally a wide blue ribbon worn by members of the highest order of the knighthood. Now, the original version of cordon bleu does not look like this. You can only find this in your frozen aisle. Let me show you the real deal. First thing we need is chicken, and brass is gonna work great for it. Now you wanna cut it right in half. Once that's done, you wanna season it with salt and pepper. Then add some ham, and right on top, some cheese. Then close the whole thing up, make sure it's nice and tight, and immediately go in with some flour, followed by the egg wash, and of course, breadcrumbs. Next up, to cook it up. So into a pan, throw in a good amount of butter. And you know that if you leave butter by itself, it's gonna burn. So you wanna go ahead and add some oil. Once it's sizzling, go ahead and throw in your chicken. Once a nice golden brown color is reached on one side, go ahead and flip. Because once both are done, your chicken cordon bleu is ready. To finish it off, just sprinkle some salt right on top. It does not get any easier than that. Now, like I said in the beginning, it is quite different from the ones found in the frozen aisle. But is it any better? Well, let's find out right now. What do you guys think, huh? Wow, what an upgrade. Looks really good. Do you know what this is? It looks like chicken cordon bleu. Oh, you will be correct, my friend. Enough talking, let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Mm. I'm like in a world of my own right now from how delicious and flavorful that chicken was. It tastes good. The crispiness of the outside, the juiciness of the chicken. You have that gooey cheese, that ham as well that adds a nice little pop of flavor in there that you wouldn't expect when you're eating stuffed chicken. It's just fantastic. What do you think, huh? You like? Better than your mom's? Oh my God, dude. <laughs> It was store-bought, and it was definitely not even close to this. That I was agree, so much worse than this. This is amazing. This chicken here is very popular here in the United States and a few other countries, unlike the next one coming up, where it's popular everywhere. Welcome to the 1950s. Fast food was extremely popular during this period. And even those burgers and fries were good, this is on a whole nother level. I mean, take a look at it. Come on now. 
I'm talking about chicken parm. And surprisingly, it is easier than you think. Again, we're gonna start off with chicken breast. Like we did previously, the first thing to do is to go ahead and flatten it out as much as possible. Once that's done, season it with salt and pepper. Now soak it in egg wash, followed by the flour, then right back into the egg wash, and immediately in the breadcrumbs. This will give an extra coating on your breading. And that's what we want for chicken parm. The thicker the coating is, the better. Then immediately into the oil at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You wanna get a nice golden brown color as quickly as possible. Because remember, you're gonna cook it twice. In the middle, it's not fully cooked yet, but the crust was achieved. Make sure to set it down on a cooling rack. That way it will stay crispy because the sauce is super simple to make. Into a skillet, throw in some olive oil, followed by some shallots and garlic. Mix everything well and cook it up. We don't want too much color on it. As soon as you get a little bit, it's ready. Now into a bowl, throw in some whole tomatoes. Now you wanna go ahead and crush them with your hands. Having nice little chunks is best. Then you wanna add that mix that you just made into a bowl, followed by some salt, a little bit more of olive oil. Mix everything well and your sauce is done. It doesn't get any easier than that. Now to finish it up, add a generous amount of tomato sauce right on top, followed by this. Fresh mozzarella, my friends. Once it's nicely shredded, go ahead and add mozzarella cheese followed by Parmigiano Reggiano. Then immediately go in in the oven until the cheese is fully melted. As once that's done, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and plate. I like to add a generous amount of sauce on the bottom, followed by the chickens. And of course, to finish it up, some parsley. Now this is chicken parm. Is it as good as it looks? How will this this one stack up with the previous ones. Well, we're about to find out right now. What do you guys think, huh? That looks delicious. You ready to try it? Yes. Enough talking, let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mmm. That is incredible, everybody. What do you think? Are you quiet? <laughs> it's heavy how good this chicken is. Perfectly fried. The chicken is actually very tender and moist. Plus you have that cheese that adds a nice gooiness on top. I love the tomato sauce because it's not sweet. It adds a nice flavor on top of all this other banging toppings on this chicken. I mean, it is. You know what most so people do? Fruits. The mistake of making chicken parm? Mm. They cook the sauce. Okay, I've learned this from my good friend Vito. Don't cook your tomatoes, everybody. This has to be hands down my favorite dish of the day so far. I cannot wait to see what else we got in store. It's good, huh? Now I cannot wait for you guys to see what comes up on the next decade. In the 60s, chicken became more popular than ever in the fast food industry. And even though there was already Chick-fil-A and others, the real champ was KFC. But it started becoming so big that Colonel Sanders couldn't handle it anymore. So in 1964, he sold the company. And in just a few years, years after that, it expanded worldwide. But they kept one thing very original until today, and that is the Colonel's face, which is known everywhere. Now to make their classic chicken, it's quite simple. That is if you know how, as there are some secrets. Let me show you. To do this properly, you gotta use the whole bird. For the seasoning to start off, just salt, a good amount. Once that's done, you wanna go ahead and brine it in buttermilk. Believe me on this one, it does wonders to your chicken. Now to the secret spices. Into a bowl, you wanna throw in some black pepper, followed by mustard powder, MSG, smoked paprika, garlic salt, white pepper, oregano, celery salt, basil, salt, ginger powder, and thyme. To finish it off, throw in all-purpose flour and mix everything well. Now this is gonna make this batter extremely flavorful. But we're not done with the secrets yet. As after your chicken has been marinating in the buttermilk, you wanna immediately go in on the flour mix, shake off any excess, and into a pressure cooker it goes. Yes, my friends, KFC pressure cooks and fry at the same time. As once it's done, you wanna immediately remove the pressure and take the chicken out. To finish it off and keep it authentic, you wanna go ahead and put it in the bucket. There's just something really special about this bucket. The question is, did I nail the recipe? Does it taste as good as real KFC? Well, let's find out right now. The 1960s Kentucky Fried Chicken. I want to know you guys' opinion. Let me know. Please dig in. Dig in. Are you a th oh, oh, damn. I was... Oh, man. <laughs> you got the only two. I know. I'm going to go with a breast. I don't want no damn breast. Breast sucks. Whoa, sometimes they're good. This is a family channel, okay? Relax. Enough talking. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Wow. The pressure fry is just on another level, everybody. This is literally so soft mm -hmm. and juicy, man. It's That's crispy crazy. and soft at the same time. I want to know, wow. does it taste similar to KFC? Let me know, Leo. What do you think? Dude, this tastes better than KFC. <laughs> Let me tell you, perfectly fried, perfectly crispy, and every single bite is just bursting juicy chicken deliciousness, and it's fantastic. 
I'm like so shook about the crust. Yeah. It's almost identical to the way that it looks when you buy it too. Yeah. With over 25,000 stores in 147 countries, everybody knows what this tastes like, which unfortunately we cannot say the same thing about the next one. Welcome to the 1970s. <sighs> We're getting into the disco era. Bright lights, funky dance, and high-waisted jeans was a thing. In the UK, a high migration of Indians also occurred during that time. And because of that reason, one of the most popular chicken was a hit. I'm talking about chicken tikka masala. This is honestly one of the most flavorful ways to have chicken. First up, the chicken. For this recipe, we're gonna be using thighs. Then you wanna chop it up in small pieces. Now into a skillet, heat up some mustard oil. Once that's done, immediately throw into a bowl. Now add some garam masala, followed by cashmere chili powder, turmeric, salt, and lime juice. Now mix everything well and blend it together, as then you want to add some yogurt. Now mix a little bit more and immediately throw in the chicken. Make sure that every single one of them is fully coated, as now you want to let it marinate for at least one hour or better yet, overnight. Now to make the delicious gravy. Into a skillet, throw in some oil and immediately go in with some red onions, followed by garlic. Mix everything well and let that simmer for a little bit. As soon as you start getting a little bit of color, add a generous amount of tomatoes and cook that up. As now you want to add some fresno chili pepper in there. Mix everything well and keep cooking it under medium heat. Now lower the heat and add in some salt, followed by garam masala, coriander, turmeric, and cashmere chili powder. Mix everything well and combine the ingredients. And if it starts getting too thick on you, you want to go ahead and throw in a little bit of water, followed by heavy cream. Then mix it a little bit more and immediately everything goes into the blender. You want to make sure to blend everything well, because once it's done, throw it right back into the skillet as now it's time to cook up the chicken and of course the first thing you gotta do is take it out of the marinade squeeze all of the excess and into a skillet cook it up once you've gotten a nice beautiful color throw that into the gravy mix everything well and the only thing left to do now is to plate it throw a good amount of the gravy right in the middle followed by that wonderful chicken then add a little bit of heavy cream followed by some mustard oil and to finish it up some green to keep it healthy yes it takes a little bit of time but the question is how good is it really well let's find out right now. Welcome to the 1970 gentlemen. This is chicken tikka masala. What do you guys think? It looks nice. This is very flavorful and if you've never had it, we're gonna do our best to describe to you what it tastes like. Let's give it a try. Cheers everybody. Cheers. Mmm. Ooh. Yeah, a little tang. Yeah, um, no, a little, a little heat there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sauce is so damn special. It has so much flavor. It's so thick and creamy and flavorful. It has that consistency that's like, it's almost creamy. But it has that heat and it has a crazy amount of flavors. I told you guys, it is absolutely delicious and it is homemade. It is a little bit of work to make it, but it's worth it and completely different. What's about to come up next? Because I'll tell you one thing, you both gonna love it. Oh yeah? Oh. In the 80s, McDonald's was on top of the world. Even though their burgers and fries were doing pretty well, they wanted an alternative to red meat. So the McNuggets were born. From day one until today, there are four shapes to this iconic meal. You got the bone, the bell, the ball, and the boot. Which one is your favorite? To make it, it might not be as complicated as you might think. Let me show you. Even though most people think that McDonald's is created out of this pink sauce, they busted that myth long time ago. Because it's really made with ground chicken. To be specific, they use the breast. And for the seasoning, it's quite interesting. You got salt, MSG, and sugar. Mix everything well until it's fully combined, and you got your mix ready. Then you wanna make a first batter, which you mix a little bit of cornstarch followed by water. Mix everything well until it's fully dissolved, and there you have it. Next up, into a bowl, you wanna throw in some all-purpose flour, followed by white pepper, MSG, and salt. Whisk that up and combine those ingredients together. And that's gonna be the flour dredge. For the final batter, into a bowl, throw in some cornstarch, followed by baking salt, Soda, baking powder, an egg, all-purpose flour, and water. Now mix everything together into a nice thick batter is formed, just like this. Because the next step might be the most complicated one, and that is to make the original shapes. The easiest way to do so is to wet your hands really good. Here's the bone. This one is the bell. We got the ball. And to finish it up, the boot. Which of these iconic shapes do you like best? Let me know in the comments down below, as McDonald's has machine to make their own. But if you're making at home, it takes some time. Now the only thing left to do is to go ahead and finish 
finish them off. First, they go into the cornstarch and water mix, followed by the flour with the seasoning, and lastly, into the last batter. Make sure to drain it really good and immediately go into the fryer at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to let them fry up until you get a nice golden brown color. As once it's done, your chicken nuggets is ready. And even though there's a lot of steps, it's fairly easy. If you're going to serve chicken nuggets, you got to have the sauces. And believe it or not, these are the four original sauces. You got honey, sweet and sour, the hot mustard, and tangy barbecue. Because we all know chicken nuggets without sauce is not the same. The question is, are the ones I made similar to the real deal? Well, let's find out right now. And here we have the 1980s. What do you guys think, huh? Google, I could have smelled this a mile away. <laughs> do you say chicken nuggets or you say chicken McNuggets? No, no, no I say chicken, chicken nuggets. nuggets. Sometimes I'll say nuggies. Oh, that's just chicken you, bro. Nuggies. That's just you, bro. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. How did you recreate that? What do you guys think? I think it tastes the same, but there's so much more meat. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> I disagree. I don't think they're the same. I think yours tastes better. The <laughs> amount of chicken that's inside of it too is just, it's jam packed, it's full of chicken and flavor. I love it. And it's delicious. I knew you guys were gonna love this one here, but the next decade, even though it's still gonna be McDonald's, I think you guys are gonna hate it. What? McDonald's? McDonald's introduces chicken fajitas, only 99 cents each. What kind of commercial was that? I guess that had to be a steal. But does it taste good? Well, let's find out. First up, the chicken. We got chicken breast. For the seasoning, I use salt, followed by black pepper, garlic powder, and for some heat, some chipotle powder. Next up, to cook them. Into a skillet they go until we get a nice golden brown color and they're cooked all the way through. Once it's done, there's one thing you gotta be sure of, and that is not to overcook it. Make sure your chicken is nice and juicy. And now, the vegetables. Believe it or not, for their fajitas, they didn't even cook them at that time. But that's not okay okay with me. We gotta at least cook them for a second. Come on now. That's just not right. And for the tortilla, they used flour. So to finish it up, the 1990s McDonald's fajita. First, they had the tortilla, followed by the vegetables, a tiny bit of cheddar cheese, and of course, the chicken. Now close it up and slightly heat them up on the pan. Does it look good to you? I had no idea they had fajitas on the menu until I found this out. But let's see how it tastes. And here we have the 1990s. What do you guys think, huh? What is that, bro? A little burrito? Fajita, man, don't insult me. I didn't know McDonald's had fajitas. I'd never heard of this. Okay, well, let's give it a try and let's see uh, how we like it or how we hate it. Enough talking, 1990s fast food. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. I mean, it's okay. It's kind of boring. <laughs> it doesn't have bold flavor. It's very basic, boring. It's a little bit dry. It's, it just feels like they just tossed it together. It doesn't even feel like they tried. I think this has to be the worst chicken on the list so far. <laughs> we all agree this is sh but the next decade is about to be real good, everybody. Real delicious. In the 2000s, Buffalo Wild Wings created the boneless wings. It was controversial as most people said they were not wings. But Buffalo Wild did not care. They were selling them like hotcakes. Now to make them, it's super simple. They use chicken breast. First thing to do is to cut them up in small cubes. For the breading, first you want to add some all-purpose flour to a bowl, followed by cornstarch, garlic powder, chili powder, onion powder, black pepper, and a good amount of salt. Now mix it well and bring all of these ingredients together, and there you have it. On a separate bowl, combine some eggs followed by milk. Whisk that up together and that's it. And once it's fully combined, go ahead and throw in your chicken. Make sure you get a nice coating on all of them. Then immediately into the flour mix we just made. Make sure they get a nice coating and that is as easy and as simple as it gets. Once you remove all of the extra flour, they are now ready to be fried. And to do that, into a 350 degrees oil they go. You want to get a nice golden brown color. As once that's achieved, your boneless wings are ready. But even though they look delicious, 99% of the time Buffalo Wild Wings just toss them in a sauce. And they have quite a few sauces for you to choose from. Now the question is, does this one that we just made stacks up to the real deal? Well, we're about to find out right now. And here we have the 2000s Buffalo Wild Wings. What do you guys think, huh? I don't know, but that looks a lot better than what I remember. I gotta say, but it looks pretty nice. <laughs> Since we already tried Guga's McNuggets, I'm really excited to see if these are improved or if Buffalo Wild Wings is better. Sounds good. Enough talking. Let's see. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Nah, bro. That's so much better. 
That's unfair, Google. That's not right. I don't even have to try that. I'm sorry, but this one is a lot better than this one, everybody. <laughs> wow. wow. It's more crunchy than Buffalo Wild Wings, and the inside is more tender and more juicy. In every way, it's better. And the thing I like the most is that sometimes with Buffalo Wild Wings, the wings come out and they're greasy, they're, yeah. they're soggy, they're like coated in, in nasty oil, right? This one, not at all. It's so light and crispy and crunchy. Now, I can't go to Buffalo Wild Wings again, Guru. <laughs> yeah, for real. Here's what I will say, everybody. I know I might get in trouble, but at least to me, this is not wings, okay? These are pieces of chicken that are delicious. Look, these are okay, but I like some bone on my meat. What? Uh, pause. It's just not the same, everybody, but coming up on the next decade, probably the most successful chicken sandwich ever. Even though they opened their doors in 1972 and their fried chicken was phenomenal, it was not as popular as it is today. And all because of this sandwich. We're talking about Popeyes. In this decade, every influencer made their version of the Popeyes chicken sandwich. And the best part is that to make it, it's quite simple. Let me show you. You can use chicken thighs, but Popeyes uses chicken breast. And there's no need to season them. And here's why. Into a bowl, first throw in some buttermilk, followed by garlic powder, kosher salt, and mix everything well. Now immediately throw in the chicken in there and let it marinate. Overnight is best results, but at least give it an hour. For the seasoned flour it is quite simple. Start with all-purpose flour, followed by smoked paprika, garlic powder, black pepper, and salt. Now mix everything well and combine those ingredients, as the next thing to do is to go ahead and fry it up. So first remove the chicken from the batter and immediately into the seasoned flour, make sure to get a nice coating and shake off all of the excess. Then into the oil it goes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to fry it up until you get a nice beautiful golden brown color as once it's fully cooked take a look now that is some good fried chicken immediately set them down on a cooling rack so that it can stay nice and crispy because if you want your chicken sandwich to be really good you definitely want to toast your buns and i'm using brioche do it with butter forget about searing your buns with mayo that is not as good once that's done add a generous amount of mayo right on the bottom followed by some pickles and immediately go in with the chicken and to finish it off, some more mayo on the top, and of course, the top bun. Now that is how easy it is to make the Popeye's chicken sandwich. And I'll tell you one thing, it is fantastic. Because look, once I slice it open, check out how juicy that chicken is. But does it stack up with the real deal? Well, let's find out right now. Hey, that looks like a Popeye's chicken sandwich to me. It is. <laughs> I already talked about it enough. Let's taste it. Hell yeah. Let's go. Dig in. I got to say, everybody, about all the sandwiches, I got to say, I think this one is my favorite. From like fast food? From like chicken sandwich. Everywhere. I don't think there's a better chicken sandwich. Enough talking. Let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Tell me I'm wrong. Damn. Hmm? Damn. That is amazing, everybody. A little bit of mayo. Mm. What are you doing, bro? Getting rid of the Whoa. unnecessary. What? Why is he taking the pickles out? Leo, describe this to the people that never had one. If you guys have had a Popeye's chicken sandwich, you guys know exactly what I'm about to say. It's perfectly fried. The bread is nice and soft, super crispy, nice and juicy. I am a big fan of the pickles on it. Yeah, me too. It adds a nice little acidity that balances out the savory taste of this sandwich overall. I love how simple it is, right? Yeah. We've had some crazy dishes on this list, and this is just chicken, bread, pickle, mayo. That's it. But but the simplicity says it all. It even kind of tastes like the Popeyes one. Like you really did your thing. It like literally tastes like Popeyes. Tastes absolutely the same to me. It's slightly better, I must say. But I mean, <laughs> at least that's me. And this concludes 100 years of chicken. It was incredible making all of them and yeah. this history that we just passed. It was amazing. And the final champion is the chicken parm. Huh? I mean, with flavor like that, it's hard to beat. It is, I 100% agree. Let us know in the comments down below which one was your favorite. We would love to know. And most importantly, what would you like to see for the next episode? If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. Remember, everything I use is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.